So yeah, it, it has created a lot of drama in a sense too, as well. So um, this uh, this photo actually that I took uh, here that you can see on your, on the slide, uh, it's actually from our textbook, uh, and I did this as an example. I took the photo of this graph from our textbook uh, with my iPhone. I edited it, uh, cropped it. Uh, changed the effects, I saved it, I emailed it to myself, and then I uploaded it to this presentation in a matter of about two minutes, uh, which I think is just an example of how simple and how easy it is to share uh, images. Um, uh, let's talk real quick about the background of, um, of uh, digital technology and photography. Um, uh, the ability to take scan manipulate, disseminate, and store images has spawned major changes for the communication technology industry. Um, and we talked a little bit about that earlier, how um, you know just the, the massive increase in photos uh, through social marketing, social networking, um, media, news media, journalism, uh, you name it. Uh, it's just it's, 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 it's gotten exponentially big at a very rapid pace. Um, the first photographer to ever uh, take or to have to have been credited for taking the first photo was Joseph um, Neeps. Uh, he actually captured it um, through an eight-hour exposure of sunlight into bitumen of Judea, which is a type of asphalt. Um, and he actually named the process the uh, process of heliography, which is actually the Greek word for sun writing. And uh, I found this very interesting fact um, to see how far we've come from when the first photograph was taken, taken to today. Uh, there's been quite a few changes over the years. In 1994, Apple released the Quick Take 100, uh, which was the first mass market color DSC. Uh, it sold for about uh, $749, and it uh, had a 60 by 480 resolution. Then in 1996, Sony followed suit by uh, creating the Sony Cybershot DSC F1 that sold for about $500. Um, and uh, the Sony Cybershot actually is one of the more popular digital cameras. If you um, if you go on on the market or you go on the web and type for digital camera, you'll you'll actually see the Sony Cybershot. Um, come up in quite a few different searches or shopping carts so they seem to have um, had an edge on the market in terms of an affordable high megapixel um, digital camera that that the mass market could have access to um, this essentially um, ensued the battle between size pixel and price um, that would take place over the next 20 years um, essentially up until um, the uh, introduction of smartphones and then the battle between smartphone megapixel cameras and uh, regular uh, market digital uh, cameras. We're, we tend to see today a lot of people have uh, leaned towards the digital camera um, uh, that comes with the smartphone versus buying a separate digital camera. I know for myself uh, most of the photos that I take, um, especially uh, photos uh, with the applications such as Instagram, I'm allowed. It allows me to take photos just for regular everyday stuff, but also I can take artistic photos. Uh, I can enhance the colors. I can uh, change the formatting and um, and essentially make enhancements that make it look like a professional photo, uh, all with my iPhone. And um, so this, I, there's a lot of people that are picking up on this, and so they're kind of uh, putting their digital cameras on the shelf. Aside from, you know, the more expensive um, Nikon digital cameras that people are using for weddings and, um, you know, more professional settings. Um, so uh, the biggest improvement um, in recent years has been uh, essentially the resolution quality of entry-level cameras. This means uh, megapixels. Um, and uh, smartphones are beginning to actually tap into uh, this megapixel world and increasing their megapixels uh, to a point where they're competitive with digital cameras. Um, the, iPhone, the iPhone has actually released an SLR, SLR mount which allows users to mount SLR lenses to the iPhone. Uh, this increases the zoom, focus, and depth of the field quality. 
uh, it doesn't actually change the megapixel, but it gives them more options when it comes to the type of photographs that they're taking. Um, so this is a huge step forward to consolidating uh, the f digital photography to the to the cell phone, and in, in essence, to have everything all in one package. Uh, if you look at the next slide, um, and we continue on uh, to phone applications and new technology, um, uh, this is just an example photo that I uh, had inserted. It's a photo that I took um, of our city, Charlotte, North Carolina, through the windshield of my car on an evening in March when the sun was setting. And uh, I was actually able to edit an Instagram. And I've had quite a few people tell me that it's one of the better shots that they've seen of, of the city of Charlotte. And it just, it wasn't even planned. It just, I saw the sun setting. I saw the city. It was a quiet Sunday afternoon. I just stuck my phone in the windshield of my car and took the picture. Um, so this is just an example of the power of the applications that are out there. Also, another new development is the, uh, the new Lytro camera, which allows users to take pictures without worrying about uh, the focus. Um, after capturing the picture, the user can go back and focus the picture using uh, their state-of-the-art software. So these are just some um, some new things that are... As we continue on, uh, let's talk a little bit about the current status in the digital photography world. According to Consumer Electronics Association 2011 research, uh, DSCs are forecasted to reach about 85 percent household penetration in 2012. Uh, this is compared to the 45 percent household penetration of smartphones. Um, Samsung actually holds the largest percentage of growth in the smartphone market of about 23%. However, this could be greater since these statistics were from about two years ago. Uh, we know that iPhone and Samsung have actually been neck and neck for, uh, for a little while. Um, as of the printing of this textbook, the number of prints made around the world was about 8 billion but it was projected to actually fall by the year 2013. Um, and then finally, some factors to uh, watch out for as we um, watch the trend of digital photography. Uh, newer storage cards uh, with increased storage capacity are some things to be on the lookout for. Um, this is going to be uh, good for people who are wanting to store larger amounts of video, larger amounts of uh, photography onto one disc rather than to multiple discs. Um, so we're going to begin to see the increase of storage capacity rise. Uh, DSCs are being uh, actually encroached upon by smartphones and the applications that are closing the gap. Uh, we talked about this earlier, how uh, the uh, the uh, smartphones, especially like the iPhone and the Samsung now uh, in the year 2014, um, have applications and megapixels on their cameras that are rivaling some of the, uh, the more um, mass market uh, DSCs that people are purchasing. So they're actually um, choosing to not purchase the DSC and just go with the smartphone because it has the best of both worlds. Um, and then another thing to look out for is faithful recordings of our past will blur with manipulated recordings. Um, things are not what they seem. And we tend to see with the easy access to um, photo manipulation, video manipulation, edit enhancement, um, special effects, and the things that we have access to, uh, people can make things appear to be what they aren't. So we have to be careful of that, to uh, the, the lines between reality and um, and, uh, and the make-believe is going to be harder and harder to uh, decipher. Um, privacy issues will remain as the uh, dissemination of digital photos on social networking sites increase. Uh, this is probably the biggest concern and the biggest buzz within the digital photography world today. Um, not only piracy and stealing photos that you didn't take, um, using them for your own purposes, um, but also just uh, user privacy, whether it be um, private photos that are just for you and your family to see, um, uh, things you don't want to share with the rest of the world so that you just want to share with uh, friends and family, uh, that that security is actually becoming uh, more and more of an issue. So that leaves me with uh, the question for today's lecture is uh, what ways can consumers deal with the increased risk of privacy in the digital and social media world? 
Uh, thank you for joining me for this lecture. I've enjoyed uh, taking this time in beautiful Kiowa Island in Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, I'm going to head to the beach. So have a blessed day.